to my sewing room. Oh, we have such an exciting show for you today. The title of the show is Shaped Bias. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, gosh, Martha, what is Shaped Bias? You're going to find out right now. It is so darling. This little boy's suit has Shaped Bias, the beautiful turquoise, right around the collar with the little point. And then the Shaped Bias comes down the front of the shirt on both sides. And this suit is done out of a wonderful handkerchief linen. And then the beautiful handkerchief linen is also underneath the lace. That's the little brother outfit. And you know, there's nothing any sweeter than a little sister outfit to match the little brother outfit. The little sister outfit has the shaped bias around the collar also. The shaped bias down the front of the bodice. And look at this wonderful little piping. Isn't that a sweet detail? Now let's go on down to the skirt and look at the shaped bias that goes around the skirt and the bottom the, of the Madeira applique hem on the skirt. But the shaped bias is what you're going to learn how to do today. A beautiful dress for almost any occasion is this dress with shaped bias. Around the collar, it's a little Peter Pan collar with the pretty yellow shaped bias and that beautiful little silk ribbon embroidery just in the touch of the collar. Then the shaped bias, this time as you can see it is in a curve. It comes down the front of the dress and the little piping at the waistline. And you know, there's some more beautiful shaped bias on the skirt. They're, these are called loops. I sometimes call them loops of lace, but I think these would be loops of shaped bias. And then more trim on the skirt, including a beautiful uh, yellow hem at the bottom. This little dress is so adorable and so tailored and just darling for any occasion. The shaped bias is made very narrow, just a quarter inch shaped bias, is made and shaped into a little heart in the front of this cute little collar. A very tailored dress and a very sweet one for Christmas or Valentine's or actually that dress would be cute for any time of the year. Now the last little dress I'm going to show you before we learn how to do shape bias is this cute little pink gingham dress, a real casual little summer dress. It has the shaped bias around the collar and that precious little tiny piping. I don't know whether you can see that, but there's a little piping that goes around the bottom of the collar and the shaped bias. Come with me over to the technique boards and I'll share with you just how easy it is to make shaped bias. Making shape bias begins with a bias strip. Here I have drawn off several bias strips and I've actually cut one of these bias strips and of course that is the beginning step. I have a little secret to share with you. There is a little notion that you can purchase at almost any uh, fabric store or sewing machine dealership that is called a bias tape maker. It looks like this and you can get them in several different widths or rather where you can make the bias tape in several different widths and this little uh, notion really makes it easy to make bias tape. Up here I have slipped my bias strip through this little bias tape maker and let me just show you how it works. You slip it along and it actually folds this bias piece of fabric into a bias tape and then you take your iron and come along behind this and do you see how quick and easy it is to make one of those beautiful bias tapes out of any fabric that you decide to work with. There is another way of making a bias tape if you don't have one of these little notions and it's very easy also. I've cut another bias strip here. I've folded it in half wrong sides to wrong sides and I have stitched oh about a quarter of an inch over I've stitched these, uh, this bias strip together after it has been folded. After doing the stitching, if you'll come up here with me, I have folded it open, pressed it open, and this is the raw edge of the little seam back there. No worry, that's going to be hidden. And you press it open to where your seam is on the back. And when I turn it down on the front, you will see you have another perfect uh, piece of bias tape. Okay. Now let's shape this bias tape. How in the world does it get in those wonderful shapes like the pretty clothes you just saw? First of all, I draw the shape. In this case, I'm using a, a loops, kind of a scallop on the bottom with a loops. And this is the one I'm going to use to shape my bias tape around. Uh, using this same pattern on this illustration, I am shaping the piece of bias fabric with pins by putting pins on the large side of the bias 
And then you can see I'm a little floppy right in there, but after I take my iron and press it down, the bias will go exactly where it's supposed to go. I have another method to share with you on how you can make this bias tape lay down beautifully like you want it to. There's a little notion that sort of works like a liquid pen. It's sort of a fabric glue. But anyway, I take this and I put a little dot here, a little dot here, and a little dot here, and a little dot here of the liquid pens. And then I take my uh, bias tape, my bias strip, and I simply work like this, and guess what? It just glues it into place. And by the way, you can press on top of that glue. It will not hurt it, and it will wash out. So this is a wonderful thing. The last illustration I have on my technique boards shows that I have indeed stitched it down. There are several stitches that you can use to stitch this wonderful uh, shaped bias down. But you see, I'm almost through now as soon as I uh, stitch it down. Come on over to the sewing machine with me. And I'm going to go through this again. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make this tape. And I'm going to stitch it and share with you some of the fun stitches that you can use to actually stitch your shaped bias down to your garment. Once again, we start with a paper pattern. As you can see, I have used this beautiful scallop on the bottom. And sometimes I call this loops of lace, but actually it's going to be loops of, of shaped bias this time rather than loops of lace. I love to use handkerchief linen. So I have stitch, uh, excuse me, traced this pattern onto a beautiful piece of handkerchief linen, which will sort of maybe be my skirt. Of course, this isn't big enough for a skirt, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay, now I have my pattern. Let's once again take this piece of bias and have the magic of pulling this bias through the bias tape maker. Okay, I'm going to bring my iron over here, and I've slipped my bias strip through the bias tape maker, and as I slip it, it folds it in just perfectly. I will slip the iron along behind that and press it down and keep the point of the iron pretty close to where the fabric comes out of your bias tape maker, and that will make it very easy. Okay, I'll put my iron up. Now, let's take this, these liquid pins, which is so much fun. I'm going to take the top off of the liquid pins, and I'm going to put a little drop of the liquid pin here. Just a tiny little drop will do, a little tiny drop, a little tiny drop, and it acts just like a little bit of glue. Then I'm going to take my bias strip, my bias tape, whatever you want to call it, all are correct, and I'm simply going to glue it around, and then I can actually press right on top of that if I need to. Now, that's how you shape it. Let's talk a little bit about the different stitches that you can use. First of all, you can just straight stitch. Maybe you don't have a zigzag sewing machine. You can just straight stitch it. It'll be just as beautiful. You can zigzag it, just plain zigzag. And if you happen to have some fancy stitches, here are some of the ones you can use. You can use a blanket stitch, which is what I'm going to use right now. You can use a blind hem stitch. You can use a pin stitch. Or you could use double needles in just a double needle straight stitch. Since I'm going to use the blanket stitch, I think I'm going to show you what this blanket stitch looks like. This is what the blanket stitch looks like on your sewing machine if your sewing machine has one of these. Now, I'm going to illustrate something for you that's going to be kind of crazy. So let me just show you what I'm going to teach you. And then you'll never forget what a blanket stitch or a Madeira applique stitch or a pin stitch looks like. All right, I'm going to pretend that I have a ladder. Pretend like my arms are a ladder. And what is in between ladder? The two sides, you have rungs in between the ladder. Okay, pretend that one side of that ladder fell away. Now, what am I left with? I'm left with one side of the ladder and the rungs that come down that ladder. Let me give you an illustration of how you use this. The straight side of this ladder will go on the outside of your bias tape or of your lace. Now, what do these rungs do? They act as little fingers to go in and grab your bias strip. So now then, you probably won't ever forget about a blanket stitch again. Okay, now let's come in here and sew. I'm going to come in here first of all, and I have my blanket stitch ready to go, and I have my mirror image on because I, I need my straight stitch on the right. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to stitch it down. I'm going to go all the way down into the corner, into the point. And by the way, I have needle down position on simply because I want to be sure I turn it on. Oh, now that looks just perfect. I stopped on the outside. What am I going to do? 
I'm going to slip it around this way and go in a completely new direction. I am using my blanket stitch, don't forget that little ladder illustration, and I am using my mirror image on this particular stitch because I'm sewing on the right hand side. Okay. Now then, if I were going to sew on the left hand side, now remember I have my needle down so it will stop where I'm supposed to go. Now if I'm going to sew on the left hand side, I will simply remove my mirror image and then my straight part of the ladder will be on the left hand side. Okay. We have a beautiful dress to share with you today and using this particular technique. The first thing I want to share with you in, in designing our dress for this series, I was in France last summer and I found this wonderful little, what I call a collar bib. It is a little collar that goes on a dress and then this little piece comes down and wraps around, oh, sort of at a high waistline. So this is the antique piece that we designed the dress that goes with this series from. Let me show you the little dress. Absolutely precious little print dress. And can you see the bias shape tape that is on the front of this beautiful collar bib? And then we've run ribbon through the bib that goes around to the back. And this beautiful bias uh, tape, which is shaped on the sleeves, which is absolutely beautiful. Let me just show you quickly how we did that bias tape. Remember, I made my bias strip out of the fashion fabric, the little print fabric on this dress. Here is my pattern, which I traced off for the collar, and you can see the bias tape shaping there. Now come down here, I traced it onto the fabric, the fashion fabric, in this case it is linen. Then I have my bias strip ready to go, and I can either use my liquid pins or regular pins to pin it down. When I come into the corner, I come up just like I'm shaping lace. I put a pin at the top and a pin at the bottom because I'm making a miter here. And I treat this bias lace just like real shape lace. And I remove it and remove the pin that goes through two layers. And I bring it around and there is my perfect miter which has been shaped in. Here I have traced my design off on the sleeve. That's my sleeve pattern. Then, excuse me, I've traced it to the pattern, and here we go, I've traced it onto the sleeve, and once again, I have tr taken my bias, and I've shaped my bias onto the sleeve, putting the little miters at the appropriate place. I think maybe you know how to make shape bias now, and I have a home decorating project for you that I think would make a perfect gift, but you know what? You might want to have one for yourself also. This beautiful pillow for today is very tailored and wonderful for any room in your house, I think. It is made out of silk dupioni, and I'd like to share with you some of the details. This has the bias strips that come around and make a just a real good looking four-sided figure. And look in the center, there is a really neat little box with the mitered corners. So here we have miters and curves on the shaped bias. This particular pillow starts with a shaped bias, and what I did, I used the second method I showed you just a few minutes ago. I folded it in half, wrong sides together, and then I folded it to the back with the little seam. As you can see, the seam is right on the back. I folded it and pressed it. After it is finished, this is what it looks like on the back. You can actually see that seam there, and let me flip it over and show it to you from the front. It is a beautiful bias tape. Now the pillow pattern has been transferred onto a piece of paper. You can see I have my loops and I have my little square and I'm going to shape the bias around this particular design after I transfer it to my fabric. In this case it's gold silk dupioni and I have transferred the design onto the gold silk dupioni. Now let's go on in here and see what happens after I shape the bias. The bias is now shaped with a square in the center with the mitered corners. I'm going to use an invisible thread. This is sometimes called transparent thread, sometimes called invisible thread, but it will not show when I begin to do my stitching. I'm going to use a Madeira applique stitch. I'm going to be sewing on the right hand side of this particular design. So in this case, I will need my mirror image. 
I'm going to lower my presser foot. And by the way, I'm using my needle down position on my sewing machine. I am also using a 100 regular needle rather than, excuse me, a 110 regular needle rather than a wing needle because I want a little bit of a hole over here on the side with my Madeira applique stitch, but I do not want it as big as it would be if I used my wing needle. I just want to be a little hole on the Madeira applique stitch, which goes back and forth as you can see what's happening. The Madeira applique stitch goes back and forth, and when I use this 110 needle, it really makes a beautiful little hole as we go along. Now then when I stop, the needle will end up in the fabric. Let me see if I can pull this out and show you how pretty that Madeira applique stitch. Do you see how beautiful that Madeira applique stitch is? It makes the little holes and then it goes over and catches the bias. Next, I have a beautiful craft for you. And you know what? This craft is a wonderful memory picture frame that I believe you will enjoy making. I absolutely love the craft I have for you today. It's a shadow box memory picture and it is so much fun to make one of these. If you'll look down here, I've used a little bit, sort of everything but the kitchen sink. I went to the antique store and adopted myself some new grandparents because they have a wonderful wedding dress, uh, wedding dress and wedding photo here. There's some wonderful gold charms, some old flowers, some very inexpensive dime store type pearls. And down here there's a little picture and it's called Mr. and Mrs. Kennerly Rumford and Children. And there are some little uh, lavender violets painted on this black and white picture. So I took the lavender theme and got this little dish which was in, sort of in one of my putaways. I really didn't have it out in my house. I just gathered that up. A little charm, a little flower is in here. Now, a couple of the cute things on this picture. This is a breakfast menu from the new profile house, White Mountains, New Hampshire. And it gives a breakfast. I would think that that would have been a resort. And there are 14 different meat selections on that breakfast menu. Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I have no idea how these ladies still got into those dresses with a 19-inch waist if they had 14 different meats when they went on vacation for breakfast only. Anyway, this is so much fun to do. Let me share with you some of the things that you might put together from your stash or whatever you have your little collection or whatever you call your little collection. Let's look at some other things you might use. First of all, I got a little plate. This one happens to have a chip on it. That's good. You're not going to see the back. This is the perfect place to use a little plate. I have gathered up also a fork and a spoon, a couple of cute little pictures. These are both children's pictures, antique pictures from the antique store. Now I have a wonderful handkerchief selection here. One of them has the word Evelyn written on it and this one has an initial J which that's my daughter Joanna's initial. I might use this to make one of these shadow boxes for her. Some little antique tatting, maybe an old necklace which is a little tarnished which you're not going to wear anymore. Maybe a little pin that you have in your collection. Maybe some of your sewing pins. Now then, I also collected some receipts. These receipts are from 1907. If you have uh, envelopes with stamps on them, but receipts, and by the way, I got these at an antique store, I think for about a dollar for all of those receipts. You can just kind of put together anything you want to put together to make your shadow box frame, which is so much fun. My doll today is wearing a very special dress, and I'd like to show you how easy it is for you to make one for your special doll that you have at home. Shaped bias is absolutely beautiful on little doll dresses, too. Our little doll is wearing this absolutely beautiful, let me pull her cute little curls out of the way so you can see. See, the round yoke has a darling little one quarter inch strip of yellow shaped bias done out of yellow handkerchief linen. Look at this precious little sleeve. Let me turn her around here where you can see. See the little hoop, the little kind of little curve of yellow linen shaped bias. The little sleeves have entredeau and gathered lace. Now, come on down to the skirt if you want to see a cute little skirt. The ovals are on this skirt made out of the beautiful yellow handkerchief linen shaped bias. And can you see the little scallops or scallops on the bottom of her skirt stitched in with machine entredeau and gathered lace. Let's just see how easy it is to make this particular doll dress, which is so sweet on this little blonde-headed, blue-eyed doll. 
Now, then, first of all, you remember how easy it is to, to make the bias tape using the bias tape maker. Let me give you a little trick. When you, if you will just kind of cut off the end piece very narrow, spray starch it and press it a little bit, it will slip in there real easily. And then you can start your pull to go in here and start your bias tape. Okay, now I've gotten that done. One more time, you remember what we did? Take a little bit of the liquid pins, put it a little dot, a little dot, a little dot, all the way around, and then, let's see if I can keep my hands out of the way so you can see here, then I will shape this little tiny bias tape all the way around. Now then, let's go on down here. Once again, I am using a 110 regular needle to do this Madeira applique rather than a wing needle because a wing needle on this little doll dress I thought was a little bit too heavy. So I'm going to do a Madeira applique stitch starting right here because that's where I stopped. I'm gonna lower the presser foot and do the Madeira applique stitch. I am stitching using the mirror image because that right side of that ladder needs to be on the outside. And this is a beautiful, beautiful Madeira applique or pin stitch and I just have a little bit to finish up my work here and I am through. All right, let me pull this out so you can really see how beautiful that pin stitch is done with a 110 needle. Now this last little technique is so special, let me share it with you. I have made the scallop or the scallop on the bottom of this skirt using a wing needle entredeau. And I want to show you a real easy way to attach gathered lace. You can go ahead and make your wing needle entredeau scallop or scallop and then trim it away as you can see I have done. Come in here and just trim the whole thing away going around there. And now then I have the wing needle entredeau on the bottom of this scallop. Then I pull the string and gather up my lace butt it up to it, the gathered lace, and simply come in and zigzag, 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 and that way it's really easy to go ahead and attach your gathered lace. Some of my favorite things in the whole world are in my attic. Come on along because I've picked out something wonderful to share with you today. This lovely antique garment I'm going to share with you today, I purchased from an, an estate in Massachusetts. It has the most beautiful treatment on the skirt. Let's just look at this right now. The skirt has miters. It goes up, the laces, by the way, which are round thread, it goes up and over it miters, goes down into a sort of a rectangular shape, and then over, and you know there's something else real unusual. There are tucks that come all the way across and fill in the design, which really isn't a single design, but rather is a double design. Isn't that unusual? I absolutely love this antique garment. For our sewing from the heart today, I have a letter from Ellen Smith of Montgomery, Alabama, who writes about a sewing group of First United Methodist Church in Montgomery. Every year, women of varying ages meet weekly from February to October to produce over 100 handmade bonnets, day gowns, and dresses with the talents and abilities each has received from above. The items are sold at the annual bazaar in October, and proceeds are used to support the missions of the United Methodist Women, including a center for the education of underprivileged mothers and a daycare facility for their children, a shelter for abused women, and a home for handicapped children. Garments that remain unsold are often distributed through our social worker to children who have lost their possessions through disasters. We love each other and we love to sew. For us, this is a tailor-made way to serve the Lord. Sincerely yours, uh, Ellen Smith. Ellen, this is such an exciting project that you and your friends at the First United Methodist Church are doing. and. And you know, sewing for those less fortunate is one of the greatest joys of my life. I'd like to encourage you to do the same thing. Thank you so much for joining me today in my sewing room, and I'd like to invite you to join me the next time. <music>